Hey everybody, this is Dave from Bluebirds Games coming to you again with another edition of Unboxed. Uh, today we're going to be doing a third of the four Brawl decks for the Throne of Eldraine Brawl deck series. And today we're doing Savage Hunter. Uh, Savage Hunter, the uh, Brawl Commander, is Corvold, the Fey Curse King. It is the black, red, and green commander for the series. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and unbox it for you. Uh, just a quick message before I go uh, into it. Uh, I know that I'm supposed to be, uh, my schedule is supposed to be for the second deck of Aloro. Uh, I have, uh, for the last three or four weeks, been kind of busy, and these are a little bit easier on my time. I haven't been able to actually get to that deck yet, just because of my decision to split it up into two decks with the Alela from the first Brawl deck we opened. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just finish out the Brawl decks. I'm going to do one this week. I'm going to do the last one next week, and then hopefully that'll give me enough time to get the other decks in order. On top of that, I'm also going through all of my cards and organizing them by playability and, and, and color and what have you. And that actually was a project I started before I did the first Aloro deck. So I kind of want to get that finished because it makes it a lot easier for me to actually put the decks together that I'm making you know videos of. So... For now, we're going to go ahead and just uh, open up the Savage Hunter Brawl deck and see what we got. So, let me get to that right now. And uh, hopefully, that's enough. I know that uh, over the last couple weeks, I've gotten a few new viewers based off of the uh, EH Facebook page and what have you. And I promise you guys, I will get back to it. I just needed some time. Uh, holidays have really gotten the best of me, so... I'm getting back into the groove of it. So, anyway, as far as the <laughs> pre-con box contents, uh, just like the other two, and I'm going to guarantee you that the fourth one has it, it is a little pamphlet inside that shows you about the different commanders. The deck itself is in here in a deck box, and of course we have the uh, the foil commander. I'm, I'm really happy that they chose to go with the foil commander um, all the way through, so... You just gotta be careful when you're taking out the uh, foil commander from the slot. I'm not sure what they were thinking when they did it, but it's not the best system to try to get them out of there without actually damaging them. Uh, this looks like it was bent a little bit, but I can just fix that real quick. So anyway, here is the commander for the Savage Hunter. It is Corvold, 5 to cast. Again, it's black, red, and green for a 4-4 four, four flyer. Uh, when it enters the battlefield or tax, sacrifice another permanent, and when you sacrifice a permanent, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on him and draw a card. So, uh, <laughs> I've been noticing a lot of, you know, popularity with this one as I'm going through, like, EDH Rec and all that, and apparently this guy is pretty popular with a lot of people, uh, even on, like, some of the pages I'm reading and what have you. So, I don't think I'm going to make a deck out of him, but... I'll take a look at them harder and see. Uh, as per the other ones, you know, you get a life counter. I do like the life counters they added with this, and then of course a deck divider and a little insert for the box to keep them separated inside. So <laughs> this is the box that it came with. It's actually kind of cool. It looks like a green dragon. I don't think I showed you the other ones, but the other ones aren't aren't that bad. Uh, that one's pretty cool though. All right. So as before, I struggled with uh, opening these. And that will continue today. Ooh, now look at that. I got it open first shot. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at what they gave us. Alright, so, first thing up. Chittering Witch, 4 to cast. 2-2, two, two, and when it enters the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 one, one black rat creature tokens equal to the number of opponents you have. Uh, for 1 black and 1 event, you can sacrifice a creature, and target creature gets minus 2, minus 2 until end of the turn. Um, I will say this. I am creating a whole slew of decks that I want to uh, put together and make videos on, and I'm going to try to match every color combination that exists, minus obviously the four color ones, because there's only like, I think one of each of the four color matches, and unfortunately I don't have them, so I'm going to do at least one of each mono uh, one of each color combination for two colors, and one of each color combination for three, and then a five. I will not do a four, and uh, I've chosen for black to do uh, 
Boomar or whatever his name is, the uh, the rat legendary guy. I do have him, so I'm going to do it, and I guess that's a good uh, chittering which goes in there perfectly. All right, so next up is Taste of Death. Uh, six for uh, each player. It's a sorcery. Each player sacrifices three creatures, and you create three food tokens. Uh, that's actually not too bad either. Uh, Thorn Mammoth, that's uh, seven, so five of any and two green. Six, six Trampler. When uh, Thorn Mammoth or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Ma uh, Thorn Mammoth fights up to one target creature you don't control. It's an interesting mechanic. Um, you can end up killing him just because you can end up fighting it from different aspects of like timing. Uh, like pre-combat and post-combat, you can actually end up killing them, so it's a little weird. Alright, up next is Gluttonous Troll. It is 40 cast for a 3-3. Three, three. Trampler, when Gluttonous Troll enters, create a number of food tokens equal to the number of opponents you have. And for one green and one of any sacrifice, another non-land permanent, and it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So, so far, a common theme would be, you know, they're making food tokens so you can sacrifice them for Corvold. Uh, it's not a bad theme. I see why it's popular. Uh, I do like the color combinations as well for this kind of theme. So, uh, I don't know, maybe this will be the black, uh, red, green one that I make. I don't know. Uh, Priest of the Forgotten Gods is two to cast for a two-two. Uh, you can tap them to sacrifice two other creatures, and any number of target uh, players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature, and then you can add two black and draw a card. Eh, that's actually not bad either. There's some good stuff in this one. Uh, Dread Horde Invasion is uh, two to chaos enchantment, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose a life and you amass one, and then whenever a zombie token you control with power six or greater attacks, it gains lifelink until end of turn. There have been comparisons for this card to Bitter Blossom. Uh, it's not quite that good, but it's actually not bad. I do believe that if I make a zombie-style commander deck, this obviously would go in there with a theme that goes with zombie tokens instead of just zombies. So it's not a bad card. I, I do like Bitter Blossom. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Bitter Blossom is, it's a 2 to cast enchantment, same casting cost for the most part. It's the same thing. It's you lose a life, but you put a 1-1 one, one flyer into play. You do not get, and the flyer is a fairy, so that makes it a little different. Uh, this is a zombie token. It doesn't fly, and it's not going to create a separate token. It's going to uh, amass, which just makes that single token bigger. And, I mean, the second ability of giving it lifelink if it's got six or more attack isn't a bad thing. It just, I don't think it makes up for the fact that, like, Bitter Blossom puts out a separate creatures every time. And uh, multiples of that of Dreadhorde Invasion make one creature way bigger, but of course it can be chump blocked. Whereas having two Bitter Blossom out, you get multiple one one flyers. So there's a comparison, but I don't know if it's really as good as. So all right, moving on. Uh, Krenko, the Tin Street ki King. Bleh. King Krenko, 10 Street Kingpin, 3 to cast, 1, 2. Uh, when it attacks, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, then create a number of 1 red goblin creature tokens equal to Krenko's power. Uh, I've talked about this card in when I was doing my Perforos deck. I like the card. I just, for my Perforos deck, it didn't make sense. For this deck, it makes a lot of sense. So that's a good addition. Uh, Judith, the Scorch Diva, is 3 to cast, 2, 2, and other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0. Uh, so it's a half anthem, and whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Judith the Scourge Diva deals one damage to any target. Uh, you know, this card would be really, really good if it didn't say non-token, but if it didn't, it wouldn't be, you know, it would be worth a lot more. So, not a bad theme so far to the deck. Alright, up next is Find and Finality. Uh, the first part of it is two decays. It's either two black, two green, or one black and one green. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. And then finality is uh, six for a sorcery to put two plus one plus one counters on a creature you control. Then all creatures get minus four, minus four until end of turn. 
Yeah, it's it's almost a wipe. It's not close enough, but it can be. All right. One of the dual lands is Temple of Malady. Uh, it enters ba the battlefield tapped, and then when it enters the battlefield scry one, and it's a dual land for black and green. And then shock land is stomping ground. It's the green red shock land. So when it enters, it either enters tapped or you pay two life. All right, that was the rare section that they gave us for the uh, for the deck. Now into the utility parts of it. Uh, bake into a pie, four to cast to destroy a creature and create a food token. And it's an instant that makes that you know that that makes a little big difference in a lot of things. All right, uh, parts of the cat food combo it looks like, or at least uh, one that facilitates it making it better is Sir Conrad the Grim. So it's a five to cast, five four human knight and whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard sir Conor conrad the grim deals one damage to each opponent and then for two each player puts the top card of their library and puts it into their graveyard let's simplify this when something goes to the grave or something leaves your graveyard it deals a damage uh it sounds just so convoluted the way they put it but whenever a creature dies, it doesn't matter if it's yours or your opponent's, or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield. So if something gets, you know, the term milling, if something gets milled and it's a creature, is when it goes off. So they, 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 they worded that a little weird, but it works. Uh, Keeper of Fables is a 5 to cast 4-5 that whenever one or more non-human creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. Uh, I touted this as one of my favorite cards from uh, Throne of Eldraine. It still is. The rise of the, the popularity of uh, cat decks and the fact that it's in the right color and the fact that it helps you draw a card. This card is a beast in the right, you know, right hands, right deck. Love that card. Uh, Savvy Hunter, 3 to cast for a 3-3. Three, three, and whenever it attacks or blocks, create a food token. And, of course, food tokens can, are artifacts that can be sacrificed to gain three life and then you can also sacrifice two foods with this card out to draw a card so <laughs> not bad actually i see the theme here is really nice ah golden egg two to cast for an artifact that enters the battlefield and draw a card uh, you can pay one tap it and sacrifice it to add one man of any color or you can use it as a food token because if you didn't notice it's an artifact food not really sure how artifacts and food make you know a type but we'll go with it and another part of the uh, cat food combo is Witch's Oven. They apparently, that's the theme for this deck, is basically like the uh, the combo with uh, Cauldron, the Cauldron Familiar, and a way to, you know, it keeps coming back. Witch's Oven is the one that, you know, you tap it and sacrifice it, create a food token. Uh, if the sacrifice creature's toughness was four or greater, you can create two food tokens. So, it's... It looks like they had already given us that theme uh, well before <laughs> uh, the deck was made. They had had that in mind already, so they saw it before, I guess, we did. Arcane Signet, uh, I, I've said this, I think, in my other two videos. It's the reason that you want to buy these. Uh, if you're a Commander player, it's because Arcane Signet is probably one of the best artifacts they could have created for Commander. Uh, two to cast to add one mana. Uh, of any color that you have your commander's color identity to your mana pool it's it's actually of all the two to cast uh, you know options to add a color to your mana pool for commander it's probably the best uh orzov enforcer it's a two to cast one two with death touch and afterlife so when it dies uh you create a one one black spirit creature token plague crafter 3 to cast 2-2, two, two, or 3-2. Uh, when Playcrafter enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, and each player who can't discards a card. There is... Uh, if this guy was a zombie, I had a deck for him right away. I, It's not a zombie. I, I may be able to make it work without that. But I like the all the creatures that come into play, and you, they, you make everybody sacrifice a creature... There's combos with that that you can do that you can keep returning them back over and over and over every turn or multiple times a turn. Uh, I am making a mono black commander deck. Playcrafter is a, a uh, an option for my combo that I want to put in. Uh, it's that or Fleshbag Marauder. So Fleshbag Marauder seems to fit the bill a little bit easier. 
just because he's a zombie, but that's a good choice after that. It helps give uh, what I like to call redundancy, and redundancy is basically just a similar or almost exact card that does the same thing because you can't have multiple copies in Commander. Alright, Vindictive Vampire. For the cast, 2-3. Whenever another creature you control dies, Vindictive Vampire deals 1 damage to each opponent, and you gain 1 life. Blood Soaked Altar. It's 6 to cast. Uh, it's an artifact. You tap it, pay to life, discard a card, sacrifice a creature, create a 5-5 five, five Black Demon creature token with flying, and you can only activate this any time you can cast a sorcery. <laughs> Not a big fan of that at all. I don't really like that card too much. I see what they were doing, but for 6, there are much better options for that. Goblin Crater Maker. His 2 cast 2-2. Two, two. You can pay 1 and sacrifice him to choose either... 2 damage to target creature, or destroy target colorless non-land permanent. <laughs> and that, actually, in essence, it can take care of almost every Eldrazi in the game, minus the indestructible ones. Uh, Rapacious Dragons, 5 to cast 3-3 three, three Flyer. When it enters the battlefield, create 2 treasure tokens. So, and treasure tokens, they basically are like a lotus petal. They are an artifact that you can sacrifice to add one man of any color. Good card, uh, Lotus Petal. Uh, Evolution Sage, 3 to cast 3 2. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, you proliferate. Uh, proliferate. Uh, when it was first introduced, they made some artifacts that you had to pay mana to do so. Uh, this one's actually a big step up from those days where you can just put a land in the play and proliferate. <laughs> Alright. Paradise Druid, 2 to cast 2-1, uh, has Hexproof if it's untapped, and you can tap to add one man of any color. And the important part here is it's an Elf and the Druid. Uh, the Elf part's more relevant than the Druid, but if you've looked at the history of uh, mana, uh, mana Dorks, as they call them, they're mostly Elves and Druids, so the fact that this one's both is kind of cool. And it can have Hexproof if it's not being used for mana right away. You know, whenever you need it, it's just... Un almost unkillable other than board wipes. Uh, Alright, Pollen Bright Druid is a 2 to cast 1 1. When it enters the battlefield, you can choose either putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature or proliferating as well. <laughs> uh, I don't think I explained this, but proliferate is choose any number of permanents and or players and give them another one of that kind. So if it's a plus 1 plus 1 counter, uh, and this is not targeted, so it's for everything that you want to do this with. So if you have an artifact with charge counters, you can add one. If you have a creature with a plus one, plus one counter, you can add one. Uh, if your opponent has poison counter, you can add another one. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, Golgari Find Broker. Uh, two black, two green for a 3-4. It's an elf shaman, so when it enters uh, the battlefield return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, uh, it's almost a regrowth it's not it's for permanence uh there is a card that does exactly what this does i can't remember the name off the top of my head uh but it's basically like a, a fixed regrowth on a stick death spout is two black one green one of any so four to total uh to for an instant that destroys target creature and you can search your library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield tapped so not bad it's a it's a targeted destruction and a uh land grabber uh, thrashing brontodon two green one of any for a three four I gotta be honest with you that's actually pretty good power toughness just for the casting cost the fact that it has an ability is just a bonus and the fact that it has a dinosaur just makes it even cooler uh, the ability is you pay one of any and sacrifice them to destroy an artifact or an enchantment so <laughs> it's actually one of the better cards they printed in a long time as far as utility and for power toughness for its casting cost, it's actually really good all, all around. Uh, Rhythm of the Wild, one of the best cards they printed in uh, any the the, the the two Ravnica's, either Ravnica Legion or Guilds of Ravnica. This is one of the better ones out of both sets. Uh, it's one green, one red, one of any uh, enchantment. And this is an enchantment that any creature-based deck that has red and green in it should have. Uh, creatures, spells you control can't be countered. And non-token creatures you control have Riot, okay? Riot is, is that they enter the battlefield with your choice of the following. A plus one, plus one counter, or haste. 
So depending on the situation for your board state, this card can be get really out of hand really quickly uh, if done right, especially with uh, proliferates in the deck. If you put plus one plus one counters on it, you can give every single one of them another plus one plus one counter, so they can enter the battlefield as a one one, and then the plus one plus one counter with riot, and then you can proliferate, and for one you could get a three three. So that can get out of hand really quickly. <laughs> Uh, Leyline Prowler is one black, one green, one of any. It is a Nightmare Beast. That's a 2-3. So again, a really nicely costed, you know, 3 to cast, making a 2-3 is good, but it has three abilities. It has Death Touch, Life Link, and it taps to add one man of any color. I'm not really sure the, the, the add one man of any color fits into a Nightmare Beast situation, but hey. <laughs> I'm not Wizards. I don't make them. I just play them. Mayhem Devil is one of my favorite cards from... Uh, the War of the Spark set, uh, I do have a, a affinity for playing the Devils. I've made a budget deck with Devils. Uh, I tried to make it at least viable for a little bit just because all the cool little things that Devils can do. Uh, this one's one black, one red, one of any for a 3-3. Three, three. So again, another cheaply costed nice power toughness card. That's a Devil. And whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, it deals one damage to any target. So again, the theme for Corvald was sacrificing, and they did it in droves. Uh, Woodland Champion is 2 to cast 2-2, two, two, so it's a bear. Uh, whenever one or more tokens enters the battlefield under control, put that many plus one plus one counters on Woodland Champion. So, he can get pretty big pretty quickly with Riot out, so Rhythm of the Wild makes that guy go big too. Molder Vine Reclamation, 5 to cast enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, you gain a life and draw a card. And that does something very important. So... <laughs> I've talked about this before. Green doesn't have many. It has some, but it doesn't have many options as far as card draw. Usually it relies on the blues and the blacks and the, you know, what have you to get more card draw. Sometimes reds with the way that red draws, uh, you know, the whole draw two, drop two kind of thing. Uh, this is actually a very sound way of doing it for green. It has to use black for it, but... It's gain a life and draw a card whenever a creature you control dies in a sacrifice deck. You may be drawing most of your deck in one shot. So, <laughs> Angrath, the Captain of Chaos, is one of the uh, uncommon planeswalkers that they made for War of the Spark. It is four to cast, and the four is two of any, and either two black, two red, or one black, one red. Comes into play with five loyalty counters, and all creatures you control have menace. Menace means it can't be blocked by less than two creatures. That's all that means. And it's uh, minus two is a mass two, which is to create a token, an army token, that has two plus one plus one counters on it. Or, if there's already one in play, put two plus one plus one counters on it. So, that is the meat of the deck. Let's see what we got for lands. We've got swamps. we got mountains. we got forests. Alright, now we've gotten to past the basic. Let's take a look at what we got for non-basics. Uh, so, Bloodfell Caves is the uh, gain one life enters the battlefield tapped black red. I'm assuming all of them are in there. Uh, Cryptic Caves it adds a colorless, and you can pay one, tap it, and draw a card and activate it, but only when you control five or more lands. This isn't bad. Uh, it's a great way for green to draw cards without having to rely on another color. So, uh, it's only one card. And you have to sacrifice it, but if you have a way to bring stuff back, a la like regrowths and stuff like that, for green, <laughs> it could be a great option. Uh, Command Tower, obviously, it's going to be in every deck that you open as a precon going forward. Add a mana of any color uh, equal to your commander's. They have it worded. Add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. It works, I guess. Evolving Wilds, Faux Fetch. Uh, go get a basic land, put it in the play tapped. Uh, Golgari Gilgate is the green and black gate. It enters tapped and it's a dual land. Uh, Gruel Gilgate is the red green version of that. Jungle Hollow is the green black version that gives you a life when it enters. Uh, Rugged Highlands is the red green version that gives you a life when it enters. And then Golgari uh, Rakdos Gilgate is the black and red version of a gate which enters the battlefield tapped. I noticed something really weird about that. Those mana symbols look a little a little shifted on the card, and I think I saw that on all the duels here. If you take a closer look, they're all a little a little off. Not too 
too bad on some of them, but like this one right here, if you look at that, that red look and green looks a little shifted to the left. Same thing here, it looks a little shifted to the right. Uh, not horribly on that one, but I mean, some of them are pretty bad. That makes me want to go back and look at the dual lands that came with the deck, like T Temple of Malady. Looks good. I guess it's because it wasn't actually printed in uh, Throne of Eldrain. And then, okay, so it's just the uh, the reprint versions of the, like the M20s and stuff. So anyway, that is the uh, contents of the uh, what do they call this? The uh, Savage Hunger. I think I called it Hunter before, but Savage Hunger. I apologize. Uh, Pre-constructed brawl deck from Throne of Eldraine. Uh, and it was for Corvold, the Fake Curse King. Again, it's a popular one. Uh, I wanted to make a couple mentions here. Uh, going forward, I, I, I've i made some mentions in this video and probably in other ones. Uh, I have an idea going f further, uh, for the future going forward in, with uh, the videos that I make. Uh, I'm almost done doing the before and afters. Uh, I wanted to get that done before I did anything else just because uh, that was more more of a, a, a fun thing. I needed to do it anyway, and I wanted to show the progression of a deck from years past to today. Uh, my actual plan is to make one commander deck of each color combination, as I, I mentioned before. Uh, I have picked most of them, uh, of the commanders with which I want to do this with. So what I'm going to end up doing is uh, I'm going to do a small preview video before I start doing them all to show you which commanders I have chosen and then go forward with uh, making them, actually doing them. So the one thing I wanted to mention was uh, I do have some built already, so those color combinations are done. Uh, and I don't own some of the commanders that I would like to do. So my next... Uh, my next adventure is to go ahead and see how I can go ahead and acquire uh, some of them. Uh, for instance, uh, a couple months ago I did a small order from TCG that uh, I needed for you know, deck construction purposes. I got a couple of different commons and uncommons and I threw in a couple of rares. I don't normally buy cards just because I usually just buy boxes. Uh, but I wanted an Animar, so I picked up an Animar, so that's one of my... Uh, combinations uh, that I wanted to make. Uh, I'm doing a couple of the uh, Brawl decks that came through. I like some of the ones that they do that, and now that I've seen what Corvold does, I kind of like his theory. I might use him for that color combination. So, later on this week, maybe uh, sometime next week, before or after I do the Brawl deck, The uh, this is the next one I'm going to be doing. It is the uh, Knight's Charge one. It looks like it's the least popular one. I'm going to do a preview where I take out all the commanders that I have chosen. I'm going to put them out here for you guys and show you each one and tell you what they do. And give you a small idea of what I'm looking to do with them. So hopefully you guys tune in for that. And again, uh, I say, you know, I know it's a little late to say it, but I do welcome those from the EDH Facebook group. Uh, I saw that I got quite a few subscribers from that recently just from one post. Uh, I wasn't trying to advertise to do that. I was trying to give somebody some help and apparently it helped me out a little bit too with what I got. Uh, with some subscribers, but either way, hopefully I can uh, sate your appetite for some EDH content. Uh, if not, I, I always implore you. I tell every every video, I tell you guys, if there's something you want, if there's a suggestion, any issues you have with what I'm doing, uh, I'll make the changes. You just gotta, you know, let me know. Uh, you can let me know, I guess it's two ways at this point. There's possibly three if you guys are on Twitter. Uh, the first way, is go ahead and make a comment on the comment section below. Uh, if you join the Facebook page, I will put a link to that in the uh, description part of this video. You can go ahead and, and uh, follow me there on the Facebook page. It's Blue Bears Games uh, there as well. Uh, and send me a message directly or put it on the page. Or you can go to Twitter. I use Blue Bears Games on Twitter as well. Unfortunately, You'd have to look it up because it won't accept that as my name, so it's actually part of my name, which is David SC. Uh, as my Twitter handle, it won't let me use Blue Bears Games just yet. I don't know why. So go ahead and uh, if you have any, <coughs> excuse me, any you know questions, comments, concerns, uh, you want me to do a specific deck or a style of deck, go ahead and let me know. 
I have no problem giving my audience what they want, so go ahead and do so, please. Uh, I definitely welcome any any constructive criticisms, criticisms, any ideas you guys want to see. I, I definitely welcome it. The other thing is, is I'd like you to go ahead and try to share these videos out on all your like social media sites, like your own Twitter. If you've got it, I will be putting a. a this up on on youtube and then i will be putting up links on my facebook page and my twitter page uh so you can follow me there and do that uh you can also go ahead and uh just share me out to normal things like you know reddit i wouldn't do that because i don't really like reddit myself uh but just get this out there let other people see what i'm doing uh they may like it too and then you guys can start discussing how how awful i speak um <laughs> Uh, I'd also like if you could, you know, help me get some more subscribers. I'm trying to get to 100, hopefully by the end of January. If not by the end of January, hopefully beginning of February. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and uh, at 100 I get to name my channel. I'd like to actually get to do that. So help me out there and help me get some more subscribers. It would be very appreciated. And uh, other than that, I don't, you know, like it because likes apparently matter. So please go ahead and like the video. Uh, if you don't like it, let me know why. So anyway, that's all I got for you today. That is the uh, Savage Hunger, not Hunter, Savage Hunger deck, the Brawl deck from Throne of Eldraine with Corvo as the commander. And uh, I will see you next week when I am doing the, uh, the Knight's Charge deck. And then after that, we're going to go into some more commander stuff. So thank you. Have a good one.